What is up, everyone? We are back with another episode of Shaping the Culture. Now, like, let's just get to it. The whole secular sacred divide. There is no distinction in, in the scriptures. Some of us have trust issues with God. And right, some right. of us, yeah, it's like, does God really got us? You can't engage the culture with the gospel that first has not engaged you. No. Like, you know how people are like, oh, that's just who I am. No. no. <laughs> keep, 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 keep. Drop the mic. Drop, drop the mic. Drop the mic. Shaping the code. Talking like they know me, they don't know the half. I'm like Owen Hart, mixed inside of Noah's Ark. I had battles in the dark, why you so alarmed? See the battles and the scars, had to go to class. Tamagotchi in my pocket, why you holding off? Uh, what is up, everyone? We are back with another episode of Shaping the Culture. Hope all is well with you guys. Listen, we've got an incredible guest today. I am honored to be joined by... Man, I don't even know what title I should give you. I'm going to say pastor because that's <laughs> that we're going to start there. Pastor Javante. The reason why I'm struggling is because this man models for Target, him and his whole family. He's a social media influencer. He's a gospel artist, church planter on accident, <laughs> on accident. Uh, preacher of the gospel. Man, he does it all. So I'm incredibly blessed that you would take time out of your busy day to come join us. Have this conversation. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I am honored that you would call me. Yeah. And I felt bad like the first time because I'm like, I got to make it work. Yeah. Because, I, you know, the Bible says show yourself friendly. Mm. So I'm just glad that you were patient and oh, gracious yeah. with me. Of course. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is nice. These chairs are expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You comfortable? <laughs> I'm a cozy. That's good. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, here's what we'll do for people that tune in and don't know much of your story story of who you are let's get into your background okay uh, so you do so much you're good <laughs> at so much god has blessed you with not just influence but impact Amen. um but it wasn't always like this right no, and no. so what's your i mean even your testimony the way you're i'm assuming you're raised in the church i was raised in the church okay. um, yeah. i'm the youngest of five yeah um my mother got saved probably like a year before she got pregnant with me so my other siblings, they didn't always know my mom to be a church goer. Gotcha. So wow. they remember my mom drinking. They remember her going out. Um, all of this good stuff. Yeah. Me, I have no recollection of that. Like yeah. my mom has been a saint wow. my whole life. Yeah. So growing up in church, my mom never forced me to sing in a choir. Uh -huh. uh, we they would do like Sunday school trivia things where. Yeah memorize all the books of the Bible. And to this yeah. day, I don't have them all memorized, yeah. but I know them ironically, but yeah. then I'd be like, I didn't memorize them then. <laughs> so one day all the kids were up there in my age group yeah. and they was like, Deuteronomy, exit, da, da, da. I mean, just gone. Yeah. And she was like, do you want to do that? Mm. And I was like, no. She mm. said, okay, you don't have to do it. Oh, wow. So I was never forced. Wow. Jesus was never forced on me. Wow. It was never like a, you, you going to church. I went to church with my mom because I was the youngest. Mm. My oldest brother is 10 years older than me. Okay. So a lot of my siblings are just so much older than me yeah. that you're too young to be at home by yourself. Gotcha. It wasn't a, if you're in my house, you going to church. My other siblings may have could have got that, but yeah. I just didn't get that. Yeah. So huh. um, I love God. I took a liking to just music. I mm. always wanted to be a singer as a yeah. kid. When some people say, I want to be a doctor, a firefighter, I always said in the school, I want to be a singer. I want to wow. be a singer. Yeah. 14, 12, 13, 14 was that time where I was in church. Mm. I knew God. I knew the surroundings. But that was the time where God mm. really began to, mm. that personal relationship. I would play my PSP, yeah. NBA 2K, 7th, yeah. 8th grade, yeah. listen to Donna Lawrence and Mary Mary and Smokey mm. Norfolk, yeah. just worshiping yeah. while playing a basketball game. Wow. And I started reading my Bible. And I would take my Bible with me everywhere I oh, went. Wow. And, yeah. and, and no one forced me to do it. It wasn't to get a position in church. Mm. It, it was none of that. Yeah. And so huh. I believe that was God, uh, wow. churchy word, wooing me mm. to him yeah. without all the lights and the glamour. And I got yeah. filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I believe the Holy Spirit is with you yeah. um, from jump, actually. That may mess up some theology. <laughs> but I did get the gift of speaking in tongues 
at the age of 14. Uh-huh. Uh, my first lady, she was praying with me, and yeah. she was like, you would get it, and everybody else was getting it. And yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is scary movie seven. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah, yeah, getting it. And yeah. I, I don't fake. I, I just don't know how to yeah, yeah. fake with the presence of God. If yeah. I don't feel him in that capacity, I'm not going to perform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to manufacture anything. Yeah, I'm not. I can't. I don't got time for that. Yeah. So I went home, mm. closed the door, laid on my back. Mm. No one was in there, mm. and I just started speaking in tongues oh, wow. like a broken faucet, yeah. and it just never stopped. Wow! So, yeah. so I knew it was God because there was nobody around. Right. Nobody pumped and primed yeah, it. I didn't yeah, feel yeah. like let me do it if they're watching. Yeah. And I and I've had the gift of the Holy Spirit with wow. the evidence of speaking in tongues that way since I was fourteen. Wow, that's incredible. You know, as we're talking, I mean, even before we started recording, you're telling me how your church came to be. Mm-hmm. From coming to church, receiving Christ, receiving the gift of tongues, becoming a pastor and, and, and planting. I don't know if you want to even use that. You can use it. I mean, that's the term that they understand. That, yeah, planting the church. I mean, you can get into that, too, before answering this question. But <laughs> seeds. For real. That is actually such a cool story. I think you do need to share because we got a lot of guys trying to force it and Jeez. just seeing how God. But, yeah, like from the very like beginning it seemed like everything was natural yes. nothing was forced on you whether it's going to church receiving christ the gift of the spirit ministry mm-hmm. it just seemed like it came naturally it just came natural speak to that because especially you know it's so easy to see somebody online look at your impact look at your influence mm-hmm. be like all right i gotta do this yep. right let me let me go online and let me try to buy followers or yep. let me go and start this. Tr- it's like, don't try to buy followers. That's, that's going to mess y'all up. <laughs> yeah. It messes you up, but I'll teach that another day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but speak to that. Just the ease of God's call in your life. You Absolutely. Know, just how, yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe the Bible tells us that um, no man comes to the father unless he draws them. Mm. And a lot of people mm. are not drawn and so we're dealing with a lot of people that have never been drawn to God. Mm. So you can't water it. You can't plant a seed on it because God has never drawn it. Yeah, yeah. He's just never. He's just never compelled that person yeah. to come to him. And we want to, you know, do the two-by-two two disciples mm. back in the day. But God mm. came and compelled me mm. before anyone else ever had mm. to. So That's then good. when I got to the sanctuary, yeah. when I got into his presence, he could speak really loud because he was right. already speaking to me before I got here. Yeah. And I believe that even my church, yeah. it's like that too. Yeah. People come because I just knew I needed a church. Right. I mean, and I saw this online. I yeah. saw this on Instagram. Or I've been knowing you since school and you sang. Or my friend invited me. And I feel like this is the perfect place. So yeah. um, to answer the question about the church planting, I did a service. Mm. Do you want me to tell that story? Yes, please. Okay. Please. It's such a cool story. So, so I was doing, a, um, is my mic on? <laughs> <laughs> Turn my music up. Uh, so I was doing a service. The Lord gave me this concept of pop-up church, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. And the time frame was 145, which we still do it today. Yeah. And he showed me, like, this is for that demographic mm. that they're not going to stop partying. Mm. You, you don't get to change people. I'm going. That's how they have a good time. That's their release. That's their mm. their moment where they feel free from their jobs and their isms, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, going to church at ten o'clock in the morning, yeah. having my wife and children, yeah. I can honestly say that was hard. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, a, a newborn baby. Yeah. I'm leading worship, so I have to be there earlier right. than the rest. Right. That was putting a strain on our marriage mm. at a place where ministry should not have us fighting mm, at home because right. I got to go do ministry and we fighting at home yeah. and then you the devil because you making me late. <laughs> I don't know if God is mm, in that. Nah, nah, and nah. I think God wants me to be a better husband and a wow. better dad than a singer. Wow. 
that's a and word. That's a word. Yeah. So bars. <laughs> drop them. Bars. So I. You're dropping the mic right now. Okay. So I was literally having that issue because it was easy for me to go in tradition. And, you know, you get up, go to church early. All I got to do is worry about myself. Yeah. And I get there and I sing. Hallelujah. Everybody lift their hands. Yeah. But I shifted into husband and, and, and father. And I realized how hard it was. So then mm. God allowed me to feel a certain audience mm. that wants to come to church, mm. but early morning is a lot because yeah. I have a kid, I have yeah. children, I have yeah. a spouse, yeah, and yeah. us trying to get up there early and make it out the door. Yeah. I mean, yes, we can do it, but it's such a struggle. Right. So the 145 time, mm. God began to show me different demographics that were struggling with, mm. I want to go to church, but that time frame is not going to work because yeah. I need to sleep in because yeah, yeah. I had a good time last night. Right, and right. the club has proven to be a release space. Mm. So we finally did it, did a pop-up service, mm. and everybody at the end of the service came to be like, okay, see you next week. All right, see y'all next week. Yay. Yeah. And I said, um, <laughs> um, this is a pop-up service. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. do you go back to a pop-up shop next week? <laughs> or you just wait till it pops up? It's like, oh, we thought this was every Sunday. Well, let's just do it every day. Let's do it next week. Yeah. So it was the people. Wow. I asked the musicians, I asked wow. a couple of the we didn't really have a team, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. It was not this fancy, mancy thing, but our first service, 75 people showed up. Sheesh, yeah. And so That's crazy. six months later, we kept going, Yeah. and they just kept coming. We did an Easter service, and it was so packed on yeah. Easter. I, I normally leave out of town for Easter because yeah. I'm a singer, so yeah. you make more money as a gospel and Christian artist <laughs> on Easter. Easter is the church's biggest Sunday. It is. Everybody got a bigger budget. Exactly. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That's like where I'm all just, the money's I'm, going. Like yeah, I'm giving yeah. y'all game. Yeah. So as an artist, this is what I do for work. Yeah. I left yeah. because Minneapolis is a great space, mm. but there's no, there's not, if it's not like mm. a white church, love, mm. love y'all. Yeah. It's not going to be big right. and banging where I should be. Yeah. And so I made a sacrifice over my career. And that's mm. how I probably knew the pastor thing was really happening then. Because wow. I cared about what the people had to say and not what my career could have wow. been moosed from yeah. or, 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 or rocketed from. Yeah. We did an Easter service. It was crazy packed. We shut down. Not shut down. We just didn't pop up. Moved to Atlanta. I would come back, pop up. Yeah. Last year, 2021, yeah. the Lord began to minister to me. I was wow. I was in a service singing. Yeah. And um, Holy Spirit said, I should say this. I was in a mm. service singing, mm. and they had to stop me because they were doing offerings. And I was like, in my, I was mm. like there. Like, I was just there. Like, mm. my worship was there. Yeah. I wasn't getting paid, so this wasn't a paid moment. And at yeah. that time where I was in Life in 21, yeah. a gospel artist, I got number one. Like I should yeah. be, I'm, I'm a paid worship leader. Yeah. None of that was it. Yeah. I was just there to worship. Yeah. And I got stopped. And it wasn't intentional. It was like, no, he's on fire, you know, kind of like. <laughs> and it was right at that moment that God said, what are you doing here? Mm. Wow. What are you doing here? Mm. Your worship isn't being mm. free. Mm. And their assignment, their agenda isn't what I have for you anymore. Mm. And it was that moment where I had to, I came home startled mm. because I heard God clearly. I didn't make no fuss. I didn't tell nobody. I didn't, yeah. you know, I want to be obedient under the house and leadership. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, you know, whatever. Yeah. But mm. I knew that was the moment that I couldn't let this pop-up thing mm. just be a pop-up. Yeah, be my, my excuse to have one foot in and one foot out. Did a service at a coffee shop on Washington downtown Spa oh, yeah. House. Yeah, that's right. Okay. It was so packed that four weeks in, we had to move. Mm. By the fifth service, we had probably like 200 some people. Wow. And we had to go to a different, which is the building we're in now. Yeah. And so we've been going every Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And that's how we got it. And I do see a lot of younger church plants, like yeah. they're putting the meetings together and they're taking a team of people yeah. to go to conferences, which all of that is good. Yeah. And I probably should do better. Yeah. <laughs> but what I've seen is those same people you pay to go to the conference don't even stay with the church. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's just like yeah. you get like back to ground zero. Right. So I really feel like God has to do the building yeah, and we right. have to just like yeah. see how he wants to build his church right and follow that blueprint because every good. church is different yeah what i love about your story is it doesn't fit into the traditional way of going about and and i think in america especially american christianity mm -hmm. everything's got to be systemized oh, and everything 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like talking good. The way you did it is not the way God's going to do it in my life, right? Yeah. Your way is a way. It's not the way. And I don't think that young leaders have... He coming to preach at the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think young leaders have the freedom to follow the Spirit. Yes. They feel like you they feel like it's a failure because you didn't yes. do it like the pastor that you came from up that's under right. or yeah. your friend that's doing it yeah. or the church, the big church. Yeah. And I struggled with yeah. that very thing mm. because people mm. people wanted to mm. put me under um, a microscope mm. because I wasn't doing it in that system. Right. Yeah. 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 But I was seeing better results mm. than they're seeing. And they've been around for years. Years. Yes, that's right. You that's know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Wait, I got all these people coming, and yeah. you have something to say about yeah, me? Yeah. <laughs> you should be praying. And here's the catch. Now, yeah, here's the catch. You should be praying. Yeah. The catch is they're not other people's members. Right. We got to talk about that. We got to talk about that. Yeah. So the stats say <laughs> that 99% of church growth is transference. So 1%. We call them church hoppers in the black church. <laughs> church hoppers. So think about this. <laughs> she, go, she, she don't go there no more. You know, she over there with us. Okay, yeah, go ahead. that's right. <laughs> Look at what God did. Yeah. Exactly. God yeah, did it. He, she's going to leave you in six months. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So think about that. 1% of church growth comes through salvation mm. and discipleship. Talk about that, because what you're seeing, you're not taking members. Not taking a soul. Yeah, you, you were, we were talking about your demographic a little bit. You can get into yeah. that as well, because yeah. I think that's inspiring, because essentially that's what we're doing when we're following these systems and structures. Like, we're not going to the lost. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to set it up so that we're better than the next church. Yep. So that we have more people coming to us. Yep. Than actually preaching the gospel to people who need it. Yep. You know what I'm and saying? That, and, and people who are really hungry for the gospel— they don't need any other subject in the pulpit. Mm. You know when you have an audience that wants um, current news, mm. when you feel okay talking about what happened on the shade room every week at right. church. <laughs> our, our demographic, mm. it is bionic, right? Yeah. We have one demographic <laughs> where I've never been to church. Yeah. I felt led to come. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. We have one Democrat, one girl I met at Target, <laughs> in the Target parking lot, yeah. right? So she had been coming to the yeah. church. Beautiful young lady. Yeah. I said, I told my mom, I said, we got to meet with her. Yeah. So we met with her. Yeah. We just talked. I was like, yeah, you, this is your third time coming. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm so excited. Thank you. You know, I, don't, I just don't want you to be a number. Right. You are important to right, us. Right. What are your gift things? What's your background? This girl going to tell me, yeah, I came to the church because remember at Target parking lot, you told me to come. Wow. I forgot who she was wow. because I didn't see her face. I just, that I'm supposed to evangelize. That's right. That's right. And so you see all of these people that are so mm. quote unquote church planters. They're at Target, at the mall, at the movies, and they see a whole bunch of people and they never invite them to church. Yeah. But then you go to someone else's service yeah. and invite three to four people. <laughs> Yes, that's easy. <laughs> yeah, that is. You are not planting a church. Right. You are doing, um, it, uh, we call it a spinoff church. You know how, like, <laughs> when people have a reality show? Yeah, yeah. And then that main character get their own yeah. their own show because they was, like, the popular one or yeah, influential yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. This is a spinoff church. <laughs> and yeah. my church isn't that. Right. It's not that. Yeah. Now, do we get a percentage of transfers? Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's but natural. Yeah. the transfers that I get, now, mm. This is really good, I think. This the transfers good. that I get are people mm. who I didn't solicit. Mm. They made the decision. And what I don't allow them to do is talk about where they're coming from because mm. the truth is if mm. you come to me that way, then you're going to leave me that, that way. way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's only yeah. a matter of time to yeah, I'm the yeah. conversation just like this to your yeah. next person. Right, exactly. So I don't give that energy. If you yeah. feel that you should be here yeah, yeah, yeah. or if this is a holding spot for you, just come and get what you need. Yeah. I don't need to know about the details yeah. of where you come from yeah. because that's still the kingdom of God, yeah. whether – we like it or not. Cause yeah. I could do something tomorrow that you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. There's no loyalty here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I yeah. can't take that person. Like, Oh, yeah. I don't like my pastor. Cause listen, <laughs> we start off like that. Sweets. That's probably how we're going to end. And don't yeah. get me wrong. There are church it's hurt. True. There are church stories that yeah. need a listening ear, yeah. but I have a philosophy. If I hear you mm. more than two times, then I need to have a resource or point you in the director of a counselor because mm. now this is going above my calling. Right. Mm, that's good. Can we talk about that? Because I don't think a lot of pastors know what it means to pastor. 
pastors want to wear many hats. God's called you to one thing. Yeah. You're not supposed to be the philosopher. You're not supposed to be the counselor. You're not supposed to be the physical trainer. You're not yep. supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? You're called to teach the word, shepherd his people. L- like, yep. you don't need to act like you have. You're everything. Yeah. To er- like, you're all. Um, I, th- I think I can speak for hmm. the black church because hmm. that's what I was born and raised in. Yeah. And what I noticed is how the black church came about is because the black community were limited of resources. Mm. So the black pastor had to become everything. everything. Yeah. So a lot of mm. new church plants take that on because it is a spiritual trauma mm. that we don't even realize because we've seen it so much. Uh. We got to tell the family how to get their kid in college. And when the lights get cut off, we got to help the single mom. And then when the dad goes to jail, we got to go and visit the people in prison. You know, everything becomes the church's responsibility. But I do believe where we are in life today, I know a doctor. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? I I know an educator who would be able to give you better advice outside of me guessing or trying to put on a prophetic hat. I ain't got a word for you, sweets, on that. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, I'm not a, if you get really sick, don't come to me, go to the doctor Mm -hmm. because God has already created a solution. Mm -hmm. We just have to pray that the doctor finds exactly what to do so that you go home healed. Yeah, amen. I don't yeah. need to be a doctor, but I do think that comes from hyper spirituality. <sighs> yeah, that's good, man. Yeah. Uh, we all want to, and, and I think it also comes from an innocent place. Yeah. Sometimes some people is is the is is their ego, but then some people <laughs> they're like they want to help so much that yeah. they're trying to do whatever they can right. to a, keep members. Yeah, that's right. Be a pastor to members. Yeah, and a lot of people make you not be a pastor to them. They make you be the bank to them. Mm. They make you be a therapist to them. Mm. You become a marriage counselor, a behavior specialist. Uh, You become so many things. And I think for us, one of the things that we're working on is we're putting together a a thing of what we actually do. So that when you come to us, it's like a menu. And then we can say, we don't do that. Exactly. This is what we offer. Anything else you got to have to go elsewhere. Yep, and here are some resources that you can call that may be good, but I just don't want to put myself in a position where where I'm pretending to be something I I know I could never be. Yeah, yeah. You know what I appreciate about you and the way you lead? You have a good sense of who you are. And that goes a long way in leadership. You know what I'm saying? Where did that come from? Because if you're not confident in who God's called you to be, you're going to be all over the place yeah. and you're going to burn yourself out because you're saying yes to things that you have no business saying yes to. Facts. But it sounds like you know exactly who you are. You know exactly who you're called to. You know your audience and you know your gifting and you operate in that lane very well. Like, hey, man, I think for me, it's like Paul. Mm. When Paul got converted on the road to Damascus, mm. he knew it was nobody but him. Mm. Yeah. There was no audience. And we don't have enough conversions Mm -hmm. where God is just doing it. And then now people are finding communities that fit their experience, their personal experience with God. Um, I think when God gives me vision, he gives it to me very fresh, and I have to trust him by faith. So once I have seen it work out before, it's like, well, I heard that voice before, and it worked out. So I should just do it even in the face of defeat, in the face Mm. of people having second questions and guessing. So that's where it's come from, that I've had to just do it alone Mm. so Mm. much that I don't have time to consider how you feel because you're not going to, you're not, your opinion isn't going to help me and you Mm. don't have a solution to your opinion. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should, you should get a bigger, people say, y'all should get a bigger building. Y'all outgrowing that. You should get a check. (laughs) When you tell me that. <laughs> and give it to me, right? And give it to me. <laughs> yeah. And then help me go building hunts. Yeah, yeah. So what's crazy is uh, one of our, we have eight core values that mark our church. Okay, that's yeah. good. So I can, can I take that? You can take, yeah. One of our core values is I am the solution. Mm. And let me tell you how that came to be. You know, we're a young adult ministry before we planted. And you know, young people, all we got is critiques. That's it. And no solutions. That's it. And I got tired. And I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. If you want to critique something, you must come with a solution. There, you, you can't present a problem until you present a solution. So if you take issue with something, 
I'm so grateful that you had the wisdom and the eyes mm -hmm. to see that there is something wrong. Before you present that, make sure you ask God to also give you a solution that will accompany that, that so problem. True. And so now, like, we've created a culture in our community where people, you know, they always are given solutions, like, because I am this, like, that's what we're trying to build in our DNA. And it just speaks to what you're talking about. Like, it's so discouraging when all you get is critiques and all you get is you should have done and have you considered this and what about that? From people who don't even run a ministry or ever ran a ministry themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, got it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sister. <laughs> what do you know about? Uh, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and sometimes, sometimes I feel like, now this is me being deep. <laughs> Let's go. But the deep call is the deep. Sometimes it's demonic. Mm. It's a demonic encouragement mm. to, to discourage you mm. about the plan that God has given you. Yeah. And right. I had to shut my ears mm to people mm. quickly. And I and I learned to do that with my music career. When mm. I was doing a youth choir and DFY, yeah. some people had so much to days. say. And I look at them and their children now, and I'm just sitting there thinking like, wow, you were a distraction, not really a solution. Mm. I'm glad I didn't listen to you. Mm. Y'all should do this. Y'all should do that. If God gave you the vision, he'll send some people that, that does this, that does that. But the right. truth is, we got to be okay with God just speaking to us about the rest of it, too. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. That reminds me of Nehemiah. Yes. God had given him a clear vision, rebuild, not the temple, mm -hmm. the wall. The wall. You know what I'm saying? You and better uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to get my notes out. <laughs> he shows up to the city, and day one, he's got people critiquing him. Day <laughs> one, he's got people telling him, you think you could do this? Mm -hmm. You know what you're tasked to do? You, yep. you know what you're trying to set up yourself? And he's just like, I mind my own business. I know what That's God's it. calling me to do. Yeah. And then it got, I mean, the critique got so bad, it, it turned into threats. Yep. And you know what he did is he told his workers, he said, okay, hold a hammer in one hand and a sword in another. We'll build with one hand and we'll defend ourselves Ooh. if we have to another. And yeah. that's what I and most younger people mm. have had to do. Mm. And wow. I think I think it's so important for Gen Z yeah. and our millennial peers yeah. to see us be strong in the Lord. Yeah. Because that spirit of being indecisive and always needing to be affirmed, mm. we have wow. To get delivered from that That's because good. the kingdom of God does not need you second guessing your call in this wow. season. Wow. Yeah. This this is boots on the ground yeah. kind of work. Yeah. And we don't need you going home like, huh, am I called to do this? Baby, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late, sis. You're you're in the you're in the fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's too late to guess if yeah. you're called. Yeah. But you know, I feel like that comes from mm. so many millennial style pastors. Mm didn't get put, uh, they didn't get pushed enough hmm. by senior pastors. Mm. So I really feel like most yeah. adult, young adult churches are rejected or, mm. or, un or they never got a chance to see their full potential at a senior pastor's church. Right. They right. never got a chance to really pastor the youth and pastor the young adult. It was always... Oh, that's okay. That's good. Don't do that this week. Don't yeah. everything was micromanaged. So now mm. they're just proving what they could have always done wow. at their church if yeah. they would have let them lead. Mm. <laughs> you know, you never want to. Somebody once told me you never want to plant a church or start a church from conflict, only by calling. That's good. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times we start things from a disturbed place. Yep. It's not that we heard the voice of God. It's that we're trying to prove something to someone else, yep. right? It's an insecure. It's an ego thing. Right. Oh, it's an ego thing. You're not getting into it because you want to love and serve people. You're getting into it because someone told you you couldn't do it. And now you're trying to prove them wrong. Wow. Yeah. No. And, and that's the blessed part about the wave mm. that it had nothing to do with anything being wrong where I was. Yeah. And I, and I, and I always told uh, them, I said, let me make this clear. You guys have done nothing wrong. Mm. Mm. It's me that's mm. doing something wrong. I'm being disobedient what God has told me to do. Wow. So he's making it uncomfortable for me because I'm disobedient yeah, right now. Yeah. And I need to move around. Yeah. But there is nothing wrong with what you do, who you serve, what your mission is. Yeah. And people are not used to hearing that because they always think it has to be a conflict. Mm. 
maybe a conflict mm. of interest, <laughs> yeah. but it's not a conflict. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, because I just, I got to a point where I said, hmm, I don't go out to eat with people 30 years older than me all the time. Mm. I don't shop with people who are 30 years older than me all the time. And it's not an age discrimination because the wave has 60, 70 year olds that come, right? Mm. So this isn't a, a, a age issue, right? Yeah. But I just started to realize that why am I not worshiping mm. with people in my age bracket and right. every time I'm worshiping with people way older or my pastor is always older than me, yeah. but my mom is in the age bracket with her pastor. Right. You know, when you think There's about something it. You, missing there. Yeah, yeah. Your grandma pastor is probably the same age as her. Right. And so now people look at us when we become pastors and it's like they young right. and they got all the young people or we are adults that have people our age. Yeah, that's right. And your pastor started at our age. <laughs> <laughs> that be the thing. Just yeah. because y'all looked old <laughs> at thirty, does not mean that at, at this age of thirty that I have to look like I am going on eighty two. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, they, they just looked old. Yeah, that was it. That's all it is. But they started at the very same age. They started at the same age. Most yeah. people I talk to um, will say stuff like, "Oh yeah, I started when I was thirty one. I started the church start." Oh, so I'm right on time. Right on time. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. They actually say the average church planter or pastor starts at 28 because wow. once you hit 40, you want to hit that 10 year mark, right? In your 40s is when you really see a lot of the fruit. I mean, they say it takes about. He got the. <laughs> I'm the guy that went to the conferences. <laughs> <laughs> and now we need to, now I need to learn from you. <laughs> no, no. Wow. But I'm inspired by what God is doing Amen. in your life. Yeah. And what in your church's life because it's not manufactured. And it doesn't follow the script. And I think our generation is hungry for a move of God mm -hmm. and the spirit of God. I think we're done with programs and systems. And yeah. You know what I mean? There's it too has much information out there yeah. for them to come into an a, a, a unorganic environment. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I actually, let's rewind a okay. whole lot. Okay. I was intrigued. and I, I was like, I want to make sure we, we touch this. You talked about making the sacrifice on Easter Sunday to serve people. Right. You're a gospel artist. I want to get into your music a little bit, too. But this is how you feed your family. Mm -hmm. But you're like, nah, I'm going to take a pay cut or just not get no paid way. at all. Yeah. And you're not you're not just for those who don't know, this man charted at number one on the gospel charts. All right. This man looks <laughs> humble. Right. But let me tell you, this ain't no average Joe sitting ah. in, the, in the seat charted at number one. Uh, I remember that. Congratulations, Thank by the you. way. That was huge. Um you know, being used all over the nation. So it's not an easy thing. And, and as you're, you're talking, I'm thinking about David who said, I won't build anything that cost me nothing for God, wow. right? Like wow. this king was ready to give him everything he needed. And he's like, no, 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 no. Like I, I got I to put some skin in the game, mm -hmm. right? Like I need to, and that's where my mind went as you're talking about the sacrifices you made. Can you talk about why it's important to sacrifice and why it's a lost art in our culture, like we want things to be handed to us, mm -hmm. right? But that's not how God works. It's, it's not. Like, if it don't hurt, it probably didn't come from. Me. Right. You know, <laughs> I, I think I think we and we have had this too. Yeah. Everything is instant. We got instant mm. oatmeal. Yeah. We got instant macaroni. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We grew up on the microwave. Our phones give us instant access. Yeah. If if I have a thought right now. How are cheeseburgers made? I can Google it, right. and within five seconds, Just like I can learn how cheeseburgers are made. There's no waiting period. Yeah. And waiting has always been one of God's secret weapons for mm. people. They that wait on the Lord, the back end is he renews your strength. Yes. You can get weak waiting. You can get exhausted waiting, and people don't like to wait. Yeah, yeah. Um, so sacrificing mm. is a lost art yeah. because our society – has no sacrifice for mm. anything. You don't have Nothing. to sacrifice to learn yeah. how to make hamburgers anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. you used to have to go to a library right. and see if they had a book that mm. said it, and then whatever that book told you, yeah. you have to go find another book to see if it lied. There was yeah. more sacrificing yeah. and more work that went yeah. into it. Yeah. Now people don't work for anything. And everybody feels like when they get on the internet, if you get one like, I'm an influencer now. <laughs> 
<laughs> I got one like, and God has called me to yeah. go to the nations, yeah. and you're doing a photo shoot, <laughs> and you're making TikToks because yeah. you had one video to go viral, yeah, and then yeah. now you're frustrated because the other videos are getting two views. Yeah, that's right. So sacrificing for me, sacrificing looks different for everybody. That's right. That's right. Um, that was a sacrifice for me, and then I could be, I, let's be transparent on mm. here. This would probably be a good sound bite for you to use. Mm. Turn the Joe button. <laughs> as great as things are going at the wave. I don't get paid. Mm. Even now. Wow. wow. I don't get paid. It is not the source of my income. Yeah. What the church does do for me is they pay for my trainer. Mm. Mm. So I can stay healthy. Yeah. I I came if I came past the off I'm like, ah. That's a whole other conversation. So yeah. let's let's Taking do that. The temple. But they don't pay for my car. They don't mm. pay for my house. They don't pay for anything for my wife, my children. Yeah. And that doesn't make because if you get that or another pastor that's biblical. So this goes beyond yeah. us having an opinion. Right. That is biblical. Pastors being paid. So the reason why that's right. the reason why the training started to happen was we would be going against the word of God, hmm. me trying to not be paid at all. Hmm. So if we're gonna do something for me, let's just get me wow. in the gym. I got because you. we can't be disobedient to a principle. Hmm. That mm. is biblical. Right. That's just that. We don't get to decide that. That's that double honor. Yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 I, that, I, all the church planting, this is like rule number one <laughs> <laughs> that we can't overlook, right? Yeah. I don't get paid. That can still be considered a sacrifice not being paid in a traditional way. Right. So everybody's sacrifice is different. Right. But when you'll know that your sacrifice is yours when your blessing looks different from the mm. next person. That's a word. Yeah. I sacrificed in that area. That's mm. why I have that. Mm. That's good. You, you don't know what it took for me to get up. I, I just, we just did some flights today, right? Mm. I sing in Philadelphia the weekend after next. Mm. I sing at 930 in the morning, which is 830 our time. Mm. I got 1150 flight. I'm going to leave from there, sing, and then get back by 150, go to the wave, mm. preach. Th those are sacrifices that I could say, I'm doing what I love to do. I'm getting paid. Why would I run back? Somebody else better preach. Yeah. But God didn't release me to do that. Yeah. He said, get back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard him very clear. Go back. Get yeah. back. Yeah, that's good. And, and let me say this. You won't lose an opportunity mm. sacrificing for God. That's right. You can't outgive God. You, you won't. You'll actually win more. Yeah. But let me not go there because yeah. I, that no, that's a word. <laughs> we we got to talk about that because sometimes you're like, oh God. I think about um, the rich young ruler mm. who came and he's like, what am I? What I got to do to enter the kingdom of heaven? He's like, yeah. obey me. Like, oh, I've done that. Like, okay, sell everything you have and follow me. I can't do that. Jesus said, let's right. put on marketplace. <laughs> yeah. All put on eBay marketplace. <laughs> do a yard sale. Do what you got to do. And come and follow me. I'm like, get rid of that. it all. Yeah. Uh, and then he can't do it. He walks away discouraged. Peter, you know mm -hmm. Peter. Cussing like, Peter. <laughs> well, Y'all be telling my folks cussing, but Peter. Peter is that man. He was the gangbanger. For Jesus. real. Like, yeah. I got him. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> Let me at him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <sighs> Peter gets, uh, he starts feeling himself. He's like, well, look at what we gave up for you, Jesus. And he starts trying to talk about his sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We gave up this and we gave mm -hmm. up that. But Jesus' response isn't, oh, good job, Peter. Yeah. Like, good for you. It's like, no. I hear you. I hear you. He's like, but look at what you gained. You gained mothers and fathers. You gained brothers and sisters. Like, Jesus gave him perspective. Yes. He, d he, he, didn't, he didn't lean into the problem. He gave mm. him a perspective. Exactly. And he showed him how he might have sacrificed, but look at what he's gained. Yes, absolutely. Like, I look at what I've given you. Mm -hmm. I know you've lost some things, but you've gained more things. You've gained more. I go when I go to the gym. Mm. Some people I love the videos that I make when I look good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> if you feel different, put in the comments. Nothing otherwise. Yeah. But <laughs> the stuff, the body that I want mm. comes from the pain that I don't want. <laughs> that's right. It's like the stuff that I don't want to do is going to give me all the stuff that I want. Yeah, that's right. Can't cheat. Yeah. Gotta lift the weight. Yeah. Gotta run. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. And people, when That's you good. see people get stuff that is just great, they right. probably did the stuff that no one wants to do to obtain it. That's right. Church planting, if you if you I say this, 
you have to be called and crazy to actually do it. <laughs> I, I agree. A lot of people are called, but they're not crazy. That's not that's right. And a lot of people are crazy, but they're not, not called. called. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to have a combo of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. To actually that's do a, a church. Yeah, that's a word. Because <laughs> the the crazy part for me, this is why church has been a sacrifice for me. Mm. I sing. Mm-hmm. I have pastor friends. Yeah. So I've seen them plant. I've seen them be at the pinnacle. I've seen them ride smooth. I've seen it all, right? Yeah. So the issue for me is I never wanted that smoke or those problems. <laughs> like you, you going knew through what that? it went into it. I, so the thing yeah. was, it wasn't, that's when people be looking at me like, you're doing this like, I know exactly what comes with right. this. That's right. That's right. Kind of the cost. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like, this gotta be God telling me to do this because ain't no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't no way. It yeah. gotta be God. And I think calling I th- in crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I think too, one of the issues is um church life cycles. Mm. What scared me was feeling like I gotta do this for the rest of my life. Mm. Bro, this is why I feel like we could talk for hours. Cause <laughs> I was trying to get to the music. I was trying, Sorry. how do we land the plane? And now you brought this thing up. I was like, the only time I see pastors walk away is retiring after 60 years of ministry or a scandal. You never see pastors transition out with no scandal. Just God's leading me to something else, mm-hmm. you know? One of my favorite pastors, John O. I don't know if you know who John O is from Atlanta. He's pastoring 10, 15, maybe 20 years. Um, gracefully exited. He's like, I just, I want to teach, write books, focus on my business. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still going to be part of this church. I love this community. I just don't want to lead it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And people, they, they, t- they find issue with that. Even for me, when I'm like communicating, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I'll always do this. Mm-hmm. People flinch a little bit. Like, what do you mean? This yeah. is what you're supposed to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah, because we have, well, this is one answer that I feel like can help answer some of it, not all of it. Yeah. But one of the things that I build a wave on, I don't preach every Sunday. Mm. I'll be there mm. when someone else is preaching to let people know that other people can preach. That's right. The second thing is That's good, man. when you build a ministry on personality and not his presence. That's good, man. That's, that's good. what makes people want to stay in You're positions longer mm-hmm. than they should because people want your personality, not God's presence. Right. So if you start to give people your personality every week when someone else preaches, oh, I need to hear pastor. Don't get me wrong. There should be a place where I do want to hear my pastor so I don't want to right. penalize people for right. liking the person that they feel like is the shepherd of their soul, right? right. Got that. Yeah. But when it That's becomes good. your preference mm. because you like that personality over God's presence, yeah. that's why you go to churches and the pastor is preaching. You're like, that's the pastor? <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah. I, I'm missing it. Yeah. Because they love the personality good, and life cycles with churches, mm. uh, people feel like they got to do that for 20 years to prove themselves. The church... Mm. Is Jesus's bride, Come on, not man. mine. Come on, man. So, 10, 12 year plans to say, hey, I want to do a church. And these next 10 years, I want to grow it. I want to do this. Yeah. I want to encourage families. And then at year 10, you can say, okay, I want to do something else. So, right. if there's no one else that wants to take it or that we have looked at or that we have trained to do it, because the truth is, most churches fall apart because they never train no one up. Wow. And so That's all of good, the youth man. pastors are now senior pastors because you never really right. properly created them to take over the church. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. We definitely, definitely value personality over the Lord's presence. I remember even for me, when I first was uh, pastoring, I realized when I wasn't there that Sunday, mm-hmm. a lot of people wouldn't show up. Oh. And so I had to, you know, early on, whenever I rebuke him, <laughs> no, but I would encourage yo, like just because I'm not preaching doesn't mean you shouldn't come to church. So I remember it got to a point where whenever I would travel, I never posted on my social media yeah. and I never announced Welcome to my world. Yeah, because I didn't want. Thank God we're not there anymore. You know, I think we've we've uh, picked up on the reality that God has gifted other people and there mm-hmm. are other communicators of the gospel and other teachers and other personalities that can shepherd and speak to their souls. But it took a while for us to understand that there's there's 
there's things that other people also have to offer. There's other things. And, and, it, and I think my thing is I, I don't want to build my kingdom. Man, I want to build his kingdom. That's good, man. And his kingdom means my wife is preaching. His mm-hmm. kingdom means this brother over here preaches. He preaches. My friend comes in and preach. Somebody from out of town comes and preach. And the service will get to that same height that mm. it's gotten to when I preach mm. because we're going after his presence, not my personality That's bringing good, us man. to this height. That's good, man. You, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. We, we, do not, we, do, we do not need another church where the pastor is the Beyonce of the church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where yeah. it's like this is their enterprise. And right. They are the usher of their church and right. the drake of their church. Yeah. And mind you, I love all those artists, but <laughs> those artists, you come for them. Right. You don't come for God. Y- you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like my tickets to every concert I'm going to, I'm going for the concert. When people come to my concert to hear me sing, yeah. when I'm just doing pure entertainment, yeah, yeah. they're coming for me at that moment. Right. When you come to church, you, you may, you're not going to get artist Javante. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. You're not going to get that. You're going to get pastor. You're going to get pastor. You're going to get worshiper. Right. Because I led worship for so many years yeah. that even like the worship team, I encouraged them, y'all better minister mm, because I know your seat. Good, man. Yeah, yeah. So you could actually have more to give to the people before the pastor ever gets mm, up. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, I know as a church planter, I, I often say people, I get more compliments on our hospitality team than my sermons. That's what I see first. Yeah, the hugs did the did the work. You know, that's where they min- got ministered to. Yep. Somebody saw them. Somebody loved on yep. them. Somebody cared for them. And so, that's good. We get that. Would, that could have been a whole podcast episode in of itself. Well, we may have to cut it in two parts. We might we have, have to watch two parts. <laughs> you guys did a lot of work. Got them exactly. I want to end on this note. You just dropped an album. Yes. Established. Yes. This is phenomenal. I can't wait to put this in. Yeah, you still got a CD player? I do, in my car. Turn up. Yeah, See, yeah, I told yeah. y'all, people still got CD players. We still players. got I'm going to stream it because streaming numbers help. They help. I they really that. do. Yeah. And we got great placements on okay. Apple. Apple really supported the project. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, Title supported. Amazon made us the face. Hey, hey. So we got a chance to be the face that week. Now this week is Naomi. Uh, Rain from Maverick City. Okay, yeah. So just to show you the caliber of yeah, that's right. who gets that space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited. He's, a, for he's not new to this. He's true to this, man. He's been in this game. I remember going to see you uh, at the U of M <gasps> like 2009. Oh my God, did I have dreads? I think so. It, the choir, the yeah, the yeah, choir. Oh yeah, that. Okay, so I think you, I remember you, you then. I, you've been at this a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're related to Harrison, right? Um, that, oh, you were one. We of went to Northwestern together. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. okay, so Harrison is like my fan. He's like my cousin. Yeah. So his his uh, first cousin, LA, is my best friend, That's and mine. So those are my. Siblings, yeah. old brother. So yes, Harrison yeah. is my family. Yeah, yeah. I remember doing a couple of Super Bowls with your family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We have a really bad joke to tell you after that. I won't say uh, on here. Okay. Because y'all was all in the basement. We were. And y'all, I used to love their Super Bowl parties. Yeah. Yeah. Good food. Oh my God. A, yeah. yeah. So you, the first one. It was like 2013. It's about 10 years ago. Yeah. It was a minute ago. And look at you, pastor. Yeah. yeah. So you're younger than me. Yeah. I'm 31. Yeah. Okay. Not that. Yeah, yeah. I turned 33 yesterday. Okay. So, so we, we're a year apart. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I turned 32 this summer. So. Okay, got yeah. it. So if I would have hit this podcast when you first asked, we would have been a year apart, 31, yeah. 32. <laughs> so we just going to go ahead and take yeah. say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you my, got I it do though. remember your face from that. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Yeah. And see, I love that. Yeah. I love that for you. Yeah. Harrison be coming to the wave, too. So. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah, well, I, so all that to say, he's oh, been at the... No, no, no. This, we just... We had a moment. <laughs> All that to say, uh, you've been at this a long time. Yes. What inspires you to keep going, and what was the inspiration behind Establish? Um, once again, just doing it God's way. Yeah. Um, Establish, there's two scriptures, mm. uh, one in Job. If you decree a thing on the earth, it shall be established. Mm. And our generation, we love to say, I manifested this. Well, I decreed this, yeah. okay? <laughs> like, that's what we've been saying. Like, yeah. I, we've been decreeing and declaring for yeah. years. Yeah, and, yeah, that's right. and so when I hear people say, I manifested this, I understand the language. Right. And it just sounds different from what Job said, okay? Yeah. Um, then we have First Peter. After you have suffered a little while, gone through a little while, God will strengthen you, he will settle you, and he will establish you. Yeah. So this project speaks to 
post pandemic. Mm. We had all of these horror scares that they, the world will never be the same again. Yeah. And ooh, church ain't never, it was just everything was just in this mm. fragile state of we didn't know what it would look like. Right, right. And I believe that this project was to encourage us that God will do it again, yeah. that God Good, will man. be with us again, and yeah. that. Um, one song is called A Little While that mm. is only for a little while. It's not going to last forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It may feel like it. It may look like it. The news may be telling you that. Anxiety may be giving you that scenario. Yeah, yeah. But this is a little while. So the project is special to me. Kier, yeah. Sheer, Kelly is on it. Okay, nice. Um, anybody with the Clark Sisters DNA is an A plus for me. Um, who yeah. else is on it? Uh, Bishop Hezekiah Walker, no my leader, my friend, the 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 goat of gospel music. Um, yeah, he's uh, on here. Titus Tucker, he yeah. is new. He's Travis Green's worship pastor. Okay. Now, okay. believe it or not, he was not his worship pastor when we recorded that. Oh wow! So that helps promote the album, though. To say now, he, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Travis, you see this? <laughs> I did y'all see this? Post it again. Yeah, post Thank it you. one more time. Um, yes, and then Bishop S. Y. Younger. He had a he's a amazing bishop and pastor in yeah. the DMV. He actually is an international, but he had a church in Brazil. Oh wow. And he did the praise break and yeah. so I'm really excited for the collaborations yeah, and the worship. And really when you hear the record, it's a service. Mm. It's a service. That's a, is this a live recording? Or live recording. We did it at Living Word Christian Center. Okay. In Brooklyn Park, was yeah. pa Pastor Mac Hammond's yeah. church. Um, love that. So when you look at the content on iTunes and um, the videos, yeah. it's a very multicultural um, mm. night of worship. People stood the whole night. Oh wow! I didn't say stay on your feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, yeah, yeah. what what we experienced that night just everybody stood the whole entire night so yeah. that was real good video yeah 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 it makes for great content yeah oh my god okay <laughs> i said now yeah. wait a minute when i got the video back and i saw the drone i said <laughs> giving a save cella yeah save cella <laughs> that's hilarious Thank you god oh, oh yeah. man that's awesome all right one more question yeah, we're last good. question what's your favorite song off this project and why my favorite song is the radio single that is climbing radio mm -hmm. always. Mm. Always is our is the, is the single. Track number but three. Track number three. Yeah. The reason why I love the song is because it was one of the last songs we decided to do for the record. Mm. But um, during the pandemic, no one ever seen that coming. Mm -hmm. I don't care how prophetic you are, <laughs> or how much you see in the spirit. That was something that was like, oh, my God. And so the song always is a prayer of provision. Mm. It's a prayer and a declaration of trust in God always. Yeah. So we don't know what tomorrow holds. Yeah. But if I say, Father, I trust you always. Right. Father, I need you always. Yeah. Father, provide for me always. Mm. Father, please heal me always. Because you could be sick with COVID one day and mm. then sick with something else the next day. Right. So instead of me just focusing on God, heal me from COVID because that's the thing plastered in the news. Right. Heal me always mm. so that whatever comes, it's already covered. That's good, man. So that's, that's a whole word. <laughs> yeah. You just sold me. I already have it in my hand, but you sold yeah. me all over again. Please, let me know no. what you think. Let me know what you think. I uh, got you. Well, thank you so much for your time, your you wisdom. Me. Amen. Man, this was a good time, bro. We got to have to come, have we, you come up. We got to get the churches together. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll talk off air. We'll make yes. that happen for sure. Well, I hope y'all enjoy this conversation. I, heard, I hope you learned a thing or two. I know I did. I learned a lot. He's just being kind right here. No, if I did, I would tell you. I ain't got nothing to lose. You know, the, the good part about being a church planner without all the extra fluff, yeah, yeah, yeah. you ain't got to be my friend. You want coming anyhow. That's right. Uh, got nothing to lose. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the club. That's no, hilarious. I learned. Bro. I really did learn. No, this is good, man. I appreciate you. Well, I hope you have a great rest of whatever night, day you got going on. Until next time, family, peace and grace.